want to learn examples like this with me, keep watching to learn how. Now the question 9 basically says the volt is a unit to measure what? Okay, is a unit to measure what? Now, there's something, it, this question is basically what we talked at the very end of the section of static electricity. Now, uh, we in the last section, okay, very last section, what we talked about when the volt was in, uh, in, included, we talked about electric potential energy, that's one thing, just electric potential, okay, and uh, that's basically it. Now, that's two of them, and some might guess the answer, some might not, some might guess the answer wrong, but we need to be particular, we need to know this stuff. So the watt is a unit to basically measure the electric potential, not electric potential unit, okay, just electric potential. So the answer to that would be electric potential. And our tenth example, just to give you a little preview, is going to involve some hard stuff. So keep watching and know the hardest stuff in physics. Now here in this tenth question, we're like I said, we're moving on to the equation and parts. So basically, for to solve next consecutive three examples, which will be our last consecutive examples, to solve those, you need a reference. Well, the reference is basically that I've given you is that the reference table over here. And that is the reason I've zoomed on to it so you guys can actually write down the piece of information or the reference with me. Now, as you guys slide over your mind over here, the 10th question basically says, what is the electric force of between A and C? So basically, this is... Um, charge A, the charge of A, and charge of C. So we need to find the electric force of this objects over here. And it says that it's, uh, it's 0.15 meter apart. Okay, so distance between these two charges is 0.15 meters. And recall, I want you guys to recall that we, a um, few minutes ago, uh, okay, we did a use the equation that says the electric force is equal to the constant times charge one times charge two divided by the rate um, the distance which is squared. Okay. Now what we know in this is that we have the distance, we have the charge of one um, object, we have charge of the second object, and we we know the constant. Like I said, the constant is always equal to 9.0 times 10 raised to the 9th power. So, using that, we can actually calculate the electric force, which we need to find it over here. So basically, this question is over here is basically easy. So what we need to do, that the force of electric is equal to 9.0 E9 times 4.5. E negative seven times nine point six E negative nine. All that is being divided by the distance, which is zero point one five squared. Now, I hope you guys can see. We said that when you do end up with this over here, you would finally put this over here values and divided by this value in your calculator and what your calculator will pop out is with an uh, answer but it happens to be every calculator doesn't provide you that much of power now by power I mean the calculator doesn't have that much energy I mean to give you the answer over here because some calculators might give you wrong answer such as the cheap calculators of Casio now I would personally suggest you to use a high 
high uh, standard calculator to give you a perf to be a perfection uh, perfection at your calculators. Now, personally, that the calculator I use is TI eighty nine. Okay, Texas Instrument eighty nine. The value you will get for the for electric force would equal to zero point zero one three. Now remember that what we started it with is basically saying the fifth step, which is the last step I think so, is basically when you end up with the value value, okay? Uh, what you need to do is write the unit next to it. So then the unit well, over here is basically the force and we know that Isaac Newton says that whenever the force is involved you write Newton. So here you would basically write Newton. Okay? That brings us to 11th question which will be up on the screen after just a fraction of seconds I think so. Basically, we bring us brings us to our eleventh question, which is our second last question in this section. Before we end, now here is a similar question. That doesn't mean it's easy to solve. Okay, you need a lot of practice to actually get hang of it, to get put this kind of equations into your brain and remember those equations perfectly. So. I just wrote the equation now that we have memorized it, okay? So we need to find the electric force between B and C, the uh, object B and C over here, and the distance it claims is that is 1.2 meter long. So these two objects are 1.2 meter long. It's, I think it's outside the screen, I think so. So uh, you need to find the force which is electric. now. It basically, it's basically similar to one that we did, but it's not the same because you have different distance and different charges. So let's go ahead and solve this as well. Now you have force of electric is equal to the constant that we know is 9.0 e to the 9th times the charge one. Let's take the B value first, 6.2 e negative 8 times. 9.6 e negative 9 now I hope it's not outside the screen nope it is not and you divide all this number huge amount of numbers okay by distance which is being squared so 1.2 that is squared and when you do that in your calculator you get your answer to be the force which of electric is equal to 3.72 e negative 6 newtons. Now I won't again and again tell you to write your units because I think if you're watching this video you're smart enough to write the units after uh, we discuss a lot of things, lots, lots of procedures about the units. You have to be careful with the units because if you don't write the units it could be anything. If we don't have Newtons here, we could be a jewel of work that has been done by some random person or an animal. It could be joules, again, for kinetic energy. It could be meters for the distance. So, units are pretty consistent. That brings us to our last example, that is 12th example in our static electricity official video to solve the problem. It will be on this whiteboard in just a second. Basically, we bring us brings us to our eleventh question, which is our second last question in this section. Before we end, now here is a similar question. That doesn't mean it's easy to solve. Okay, you need a lot of practice to actually get hang of it, to get put this kind of equations into your brain and remember this equation perfectly. So. I just wrote the equation now that we have memorized it, okay? So we need to find the electric force between B and C, the uh, object B and C over here, and the distance it claims is that is 1.2 meter long. So these two objects are 1.2 meter long. It's, 
I think it's outside the screen, I think so. So, uh, you need to find the force which is electric. Now, it basically, it's basically similar to one that we did, but it's not the same because you have different distance and different charges. So let's go ahead and solve this as well. Now, you have force of electric is equal to the constant that we know is 9.0 e to the 9th times the charge one, let's take the B value first, 6.2 E negative 8 times 9.6 E negative 9. Now I hope it's not outside the screen, nope it is not. And you divide all this number, huge amount of numbers, okay, by distance which is being squared. So 1.2 that is squared. And when you do that, in your calculator, you get your answer to be the force which of electric is equal to 3.72 E negative 6 newtons. Now I won't again and again tell you to write your units because I think if you're watching this video you're smart enough to write the units after uh, we discuss a lot of things Lots, lots of procedures about the units. You have to be careful with the units because if you don't write the units, it could be anything. If you don't have Newtons here, it could be the jewels of work that has been done by some random person or an animal. It could be joules, again, for kinetic energy. It could be meters for the distance. So units are pretty consistent. That brings us to our last example. That is 12th example in our Static Electricity official video to solve the problem. It will be on this whiteboard in just a second. Excited, aren't you? Because it's our last example. Well, I'm not going to let you guys go that off easily with giving you same similar example that we did in the 10th problem and 11th problem. Because this one over here is peculiar. Let's look at it. Now, uh, the 12th question, which is the last question, says that a particle, which is over here, is isolated. That means it's by itself. And it's 1.0 meter. Uh, okay? And we need to find the electric field. Till, up till now, what we were finding is the force of electric. Electric force. Now we need to find that how... how big is the electric field of this particle A is. Now how would you do that? Now we know that the symbol E stands for electric field. That is the reason why I wrote it like that. But often I won't write that anymore. Because I need you guys to actually understand. Put those symbols in your brain. Okay? So let's go ahead and put the equation. Recall that the electric field is equal to the force divided by the charge okay that force of the electric okay that's what I'm talking about now that's what that's the um, official equation as you guys can say to calculate the electric field but we don't actually have force we just have the charge and the which is charge over here and we don't have the force we have the distance okay so you just you can just uh, put 1.0 times the distance uh, divided by the charge. That's basically wrong. What you need to do is simplify this even further. Now, how would you simplify that? Now, this equation over here is basically equal to the one we did before, which basically says K times Q1 times Q2 divided by the radius, which is squared. That's the force of electric. Now, you divide it by the Q because it says over there. Now what happens is this Q here cuts up with this Q over here. Okay? That's how it, the nature works. That brings us to an equation which basically says K times Q1 divided by the R squared. Now if you are following me and you should get this equation in your brain and if you watched the previous video we already solved the um official um, on how the, this formula actually works kind of example 
but let's take a real example over here. So let me just go and erase how we derived the formula and we'll actually solve some example. Now, I'm just going to erase this part because we you know this part and it's not that much useful because that's what we are not trying to find. And remember it's a step that I told you that think of the equation. Well, you need to think of the equation like the way that I did, okay? Now, you need to find the electric field. Now, this electric field is basically equal to K times the uh, charge 1 divided by the radius squared. Now, we know this objectives, so let me go ahead and erase this and basically write uh, this over here because it's too low. So here, electric field is equal to 9 E9 times the charge of it, a object which is 4.5, if you guys can see, E negative 7, which is C. Okay, that's the unit, but not focusing on the unit. Okay, now you divide that by the radius. It's basically saying 1 square, which is going to give you 1. Trust me on that. Okay, so now you do multiplication and divide it by 1. But basically what you're doing is just multiplication because divided by 1 is basically just that number. So when you do that in your calculator, you should basically get, I think, 450, 40, 50. Okay, and remember, this over here is the force, and we know the force is in newtons. And this over here is the distance, right? So we know that it's in distance, but when the f when you derive the answer, it's basically newtons per c. So you need to follow this to actually get the answer. So that's how the electric field is. Now, deriving at the answer, it's much harder than just solving those equations in your calculation uh, calculator because it just takes skills to actually calculate the problems in your calculator but it takes hard work to actually get hang of those equations put those equations in your mind 